Well, the, the story of Anawati is, is this the story um, at one level of a small slum by the international airport in Mumbai, which has become over the years surrounded by luxury hotels. But I think that the other story is, is what is it like for families to strive and try to get ahead in a time of great inequality and global change? Uh, and I'm always a little embarrassed to say what motivated me to write the book because I'm a feminist and what motivated me to write the book is that I fell in love. Um, my husband Sunil is, um, he's an Indian writer and political historian. And so, so over the years I would be uh, working on poverty and how people got out of it in the United States. And then when I was free, I'd be in India. And I'd be in Mumbai, places like Mumbai where you have 60% of the citizens living in slums. And so the part of my brain that was always asking the questions, how do people get out of poverty um, in the United States, became just as animating to me in India. And eventually I thought, well, I can try to tell this story in my way using the techniques that I use uh, at The New Yorker, uh, investigating and, and documenting and um, often videotaping people and just following them as they go about their lives. Hope is not a fiction in the global markets age. You've seen extreme poverty um, reduce significantly if unevenly across the planet uh, in just in the last 10 years. But at the same time, the obstacles that stand between people and their dreams are just immense. And if we don't respect how difficult it is to get out of poverty, and if we don't acknowledge how much potential we waste in this world, how much extraordinary human potential gets squandered, um, we don't really feel that viscerally, I think. We're never going to sit down and try to do something about it. Optimistic. <laughs> you can't do this work if you're not hopeful and optimistic. You just can't. And you can't do it either if you don't really, really enjoy the people that you're getting to spend time with because you know, that's it. they're the people who keep you going um, when it gets tough. And sometimes in the reporting, it does get tough. Um, you, you know, if, if, you, you know, I think I would have invented a thousand reasons not to do this book or to pull out in the middle of it, but it's the people who keep you there. Um, well, it's so cool. It's, I mean, what's cool about it, though, is that Michigan State has this tradition of doing books that are more difficult um, and more globally focused than many other universities. So um, they're not doing books that teach you how to study. They're doing books that really open you up to realities that you might not be exposed to coming uh, out of high school and into college. So I, it's an honor. Young people today all over the world, wherever I go, they are so much more alike in their dreams and also intertwined in their economic realities than they've ever been before. So you have this, you know, we still have these narratives of us versus them. But really to me, it's just this one great big complicated competitive us sort of this vast and dysfunctional global family. And we're all in it together for better and worse. And I hope that people um, will read the book and not think about the people of Anawati as the other, but to recognize the commonalities that bind them. Mm -hmm.